Hi y'all, welcome back. Today in our fifth grade science series, we get to talk more about matter. We will talk about changes of matter, the different phases of matter, and the conservation of matter. So what's the matter? Let's get started. Science rocks. All right, remember it is super important for you to create a science notebook, whether it's online in Google Drive or in your spiral notebook. Let's get that out to take notes and draw pictures as you follow along. So go ahead and copy down these 19 vocab words. And I realize that how to read a graph, stuff like that, it's not really a vocab word, but it's something you will need to know. So you might... Um, write down in your vocab list, maybe draw out a graph um, and label the different parts for that um, to explain in your notes how to read a graph, okay? Most of them will be um, regular words, vocabulary words like liquid, okay? So remember they go in ABC order like this and just come back later and create your own definitions of those words. So like always, put them in your own words so they make sense to you. So go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing them down. All right, let's talk about forming new substances through mixing, all right? So when certain substances are mixed together, they interact to combine chemically and make one or more new substances. So new substances that form in this way cannot easily be separated back into those original substances. So the new substances have properties that are different from those of the original substances. They have different properties. So, for example, um, the children in this photo have made a model volcano, which is pretty cool. If you've never done this, maybe you can do this one day at home or with your teacher. So, they have put baking soda powder in the bottom of the volcano, and they are now mixing vinegar with the baking soda. Okay, so these two substances, vinegar and baking soda, they combine to make new different substances with new characteristics. So the new substances, they bubble up out of the volcano and it flows over the sides, okay? So the formation of these bubbles when the baking soda and the vinegar mix is one sign that the original substances have chemically combined, okay? Other evidence could include maybe a change in temperature with certain substances or maybe even a change in color. All right, so talking about new substances, let's look at evidence of new substance formation. How can we know that a new substance was formed? So when substances chemically combine to form one or more new substances, there is often some evidence that this has taken place. So for example, gas bubbles are produced. Okay, like in this picture right here. Um, there is maybe a color change, like in this picture right here. Or maybe a temperature change that takes place. So sometimes when substances chemically combine, a new substance that is in the gas form is produced. So the gas can be seen um, when it creates bubbles. Okay, so for example, in this picture, an antacid tablet is chemically combining with water, okay, as someone dropped the tablet in, and as the tablet dissolves into the water, um, this gas that is produced during this chemical reaction can be seen as these little bubbles coming off of the tablet. Okay, so that is evidence of a new substance being formed. And in this test tube picture right here, there are two liquids, all right? There's this pale yellow one up top, and there's this pale pink one down at the bottom. So at the surface where these two liquids meet, Okay, right here, a new substance is being formed, all right? And we can tell that a new substance is being formed because it's this darker red color, 
all right? So it's a different color from either of the original substances. It's not pale yellow and it's not pale pink. It's this darker red color. Um, when substances are mixed together, they combine chemically, right? So the process of combining chemically can give off heat or can use up heat, all right? So if this happens, it might be possible to feel the temperature change by touching maybe the outside of the container that it's in. But a safer and better way to observe temperature change is to place a thermometer in the container, okay, where the substances are being mixed. So in this photo right here, the mixing of two clear liquids is giving off heat. And the temperature of the separate liquids, the separate liquids, the temperature was 24.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, you can see that right here. And in the second photo, the temperature has risen to 25.8 degrees Celsius. All right, so see you had two different ones. And now when they're together... It's gone up to 25.8 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the liquids after they had completely mixed together actually went up to 51.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if a temperature change occurs, that could also be evidence of a new substance formation. So the change of matter from one state to another is called phase change. All right, phase change. So the three main phases of matter on Earth are solid, liquid, and gas. Solid, liquid, and gas are the three main phases of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. So when matter is heated or cooled, it can change from one of these phases to another. Okay, so some of the different processes involved in phase change from maybe solid to liquid or gas um, are shown right here. Okay, so these are some of the different processes involved. So we have condensation, which is the change of a gas into a liquid. And then we have melting, which is the change of a solid into a liquid. And then we have freezing, which is a change of a liquid into a solid. And vaporization, which is the change of a liquid into a gas. Okay, so phase change is a physical change because the chemical identity of the substance has not changed. Okay, let me say that again. Phase change is a physical change what it looks like, physical change, because the chemical properties, the chemical identities, like what it's made up of, okay, the chemical identity of the substance has not changed, okay, it's a physical change, so only the appearance of that substance is different, okay, how it appears, is it a gas now, or a liquid now, or a solid now. So right here, like when snow, um, which is solid water, right? Okay, so when snow melts, oh, poor snowman, when snow melts into liquid water, the identity of the substance has not changed. Okay, it's both water, right? So snow was the solid form of water. Now it's melting into the liquid form of water. So snow, the solid form, and liquid water are both water. Okay, it's H2O. The chemical property has not changed, just what it looks like has changed. And according to the law of conservation of matter, the weight of a substance remains constant whether the substance is whole, separated into pieces, or in a different state. So the weight of that substance remains the same. Okay, so we've got conservation of weight during changes. We've got mixtures and conservation of weight. And we've got volume is not always conserved. So let's talk about the three of these topics. 
All right, conservation of weight during changes. So when an object or a substance goes through a change, the weight of the object or substance stays the same. All right, this is because matter can change forms right? It can, can, it can change forms, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So for example, if five ounces of pure ice melts into liquid water, the liquid will also have a weight of five ounces, okay? If the five ounces of liquid were allowed to boil in a pan, all right, until there was nothing left in the pan, the weight of the water vapor created would also be five ounces. Okay, the weight stays the same. So if a pencil is broken into pieces, the total weight of those pieces should equal the weight of the original pencil. Okay, also, if an object is made out of smaller pieces, the weight of the object is equal to all of the weights of the smaller pieces put together. Okay, if it makes sense like that. So even when an object changes in a way that makes it appear to be smaller, weight, weight, how much it weighs, is still being conserved. So also, when a candle is lit, and it begins to burn. The wax melts and the candle appears to become smaller, right? But this is because some of the wick and wax are turned into gases, which are released into the air. If it were possible to measure the weight of all the gases that escaped, their total weight plus the weight of the remaining candle would equal the weight of the candle before it was even burned. All right, so the law of conservation of matter makes it simple to estimate weight as well, okay? So let's say if half of an object or liquid is taken away, if half of an object was taken away, a good estimate of the remaining weight would be what? Half of the original weight. All right, so now let's talk about mixtures and the conservation of weight. So when two or more substances are mixed together, their weight does not change. So the weight of the new mixture is always equal to the sum of its parts. Okay, so this is true even if parts of a mixture seem to change form like when salt dissolves in water. So um, in this example, we've got trail mix, and it's a mixture of nuts and dried fruit. So each piece in the mixture, okay, like this little almond, that piece in the mixture has the same weight as it did before all these pieces were mixed together. So if you knew the weight of this almond, and when you added it to all this other stuff, this almond still weighs the same. All right, if there are three parts, let's say, in a mixture, then the total weight of the mixture is simply the sum of the three parts. Okay, add the three parts all together. So the total weight of a mixture, like let's pretend that this trail mix has three things, which I think there's more, but let's say there's three. Well, the total weight of the mixture would be the weight of part one, Okay, like the weight of the almonds, plus the weight of part two, plus the weight of part three. All right, so this rule can be used to find the weight of one component of a mixture too. So, uh, for example, a mixture of sugar dissolved in water had a weight of 300 grams. Okay, had a total weight of 300 grams. The sugar dissolved in water had a weight of 300 grams. The mixture was separated by boiling the water so that it evaporated. Okay, and the sugar that was left behind had a weight of 10 grams. Okay, so, hmm, how many grams um, of water? So the weight of the water that evaporated must be equal to the remaining weight in the mixture. Okay, so if the total 
mixture was 300 grams and we knew that there were 10 grams of sugar, then the water must have weighed 290 grams. All right, and then we have the topic of volume, and volume is not always conserved. So unlike weight, volume is not always conserved when matter goes through a change. So for example, when liquid water is frozen, okay, you've got liquid water, it's frozen, the volume of the water actually increases. So this is why soda cans burst when they're placed in the freezer. Okay, so maybe don't try that one at home. The water part of the soda expands as it freezes, causing the pressure inside the can to build up until the can bursts. Okay, so the volume changed. Volume can also change when a liquid turns into a gas. So as a liquid evaporates, the particles begin to move faster and get farther apart. So this causes the volume of the substance to increase, even though the weight of the substance stays the same. Okay, please, 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 please take the time to watch these four videos to learn more about this topic and just take more notes as you watch. Yay, it's practice question time. So let's look at number one. Katie pours 15 grams of sugar into a beaker that contains 300 grams of water. She stirs the mixture until she can no longer see any pieces of sugar in the water. So how much does Katie's mixture of sugar and water weigh? All right, so pause it and see what you think. So the weight of a mixture is equal to the weight of each of its parts added together. So the weight of Katie's mixture is equal to the weight of the water plus the weight of the sugar. All right. And the weight of the water was 300 grams. So you're going to add that to the weight of the sugar, which was 15 grams. So the mixture combined must be 315 grams. So we're going to go with C. All right, number two, a scientist had two substances. One was a yellow liquid and the other was a colorless liquid. So the scientist added a few drops of the yellow liquid to the colorless liquid. A red solid formed. So what most likely happened when the scientist mixed the two liquids? Okay, so in this picture it has the yellow liquid right here being added to the colorless liquid. And it says colorless, but it's blue, okay, like water in this picture, so it can show up to us. So this is the yellow liquid being added to the colorless liquid, and it yields or it makes or it forms this red solid. Okay, so cool. So pause this and see what you think. So when the scientists added the yellow liquid to the colorless liquid, a new substance with properties different from either of the liquids was formed. Okay, the new substance was this red solid, all right, and it's a color change even, okay, and that's evidence that a chemical change took place. So if we look at our answer choices, we're going to go with D, a new substance with properties different, okay, look at the color change, it's solid also, and it's red, from either of the liquids was formed. All right, this is an example of a cluster question. So what you'll see is a lot of information, maybe a story, a bunch of text, um, and maybe a picture to go along with it. Sometimes you'll see a graph or a table of information. So you'll see all of this information, and on this slide, there's not a question, okay? After you're presented with all of this information, 
then you'll be asked um, two or three multiple choice, maybe questions over all of this. Okay, so you'll have all of this information and then you'll be asked a couple questions um, over all of it. Okay, so it says study the information. So this is just the information slide. Study the information, then answer questions three through five. So number three, number four, number five are all going to come from this information. So it's important that you take your time to um, really understand and read through everything, look at all the pictures that's, um, that you're presented with um, before you go on to the actual question. So let's go over the information. Two students investigated what happens when matter changes form. So the materials the students used are shown in the pictures. The students used the amounts of lemonade mix, sugar, and water shown. Okay, so here's all their materials, and in grams it shows the different amounts of each item. So then these students followed this procedure. All right, number one, make lemonade from the lemonade mix, sugar, and water. Number two, pour all of the lemonade into the ice cube tray. Put the same amount of lemonade into each spot in the tray. Leave no lemonade left over. Cover the tray and place it in the freezer overnight. Number three, remove the ice cube tray from the freezer the next day. See that the liquid lemonade has frozen into lemon ice. See that the cubes of lemon ice are taller than the sides of the tray. Okay, so that's all your information. And now we're going to go on to some questions about this information. So here's the first question over that information. Number three, the students measured each material before mixing them together. After they mixed the materials to make the lemonade, they measured it using the balance. So which picture over here, we've got A, B, C, or D, which picture shows what the students should have observed after mixing? Okay, so I put this picture on here for you from the previous information that we looked at. So you could look at that and see which picture here shows what the student should have observed after mixing. So pause it and see what you think of. So after the student mixed it all together, it should be a total weight of those items. Okay, so if you take um, five grams, okay, from the lemonade mix and add that to 100 grams from the sugar and add that to 137 grams of water, okay, and if you look at our answer choices, it's, it includes the glass that the water is in as well. So we're going to add the 358 grams, okay, of that glass. If we add all those up together, it's going to equal 600 grams, okay? So now if you look at your answer choices, you want to find the balance, okay? This is a balance right here. You want to find the balance that has 600 grams on the left side. Okay, and you want it to equal this lemonade mixture on the right side. Okay, so if we looked at just the left side of them all, okay, it looks like A and B both have 600 grams on the left. Okay, so you've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Okay, but we know that it's equal to 600 grams. So look at the balance, okay? It's gotta be equal. This balance is equal. It's saying 600 grams is the same as this mixture, and so the balance is 
equal, it's flat. This picture is showing that 600 grams is pushed down more, so it's heavier than this mixture. Okay, so really look at everything in each picture. So we're going to go with A. Okay, number four, it's another question over that info. So the students removed the lemon ice from the ice cube tray at the end of the investigation. Then they measured the total weight of all of the lemon ice cubes. So which graph, we've got A, B, C, or D, so which graph shows the total weight of the liquid lemonade before it was poured into the tray and the total weight of the lemon ice removed from the tray. All right, and I put this picture on here again to help you out. So take a look, pause it, and see what you think. Okay, first let's go over just a little bit um, about graphing, okay? So along the bottom of a graph, it's called your x-axis, okay, your x-axis. And on the side... Okay, so the vertical part on the side, it's called your y-axis, okay? Your x-axis, okay, down here, your x-axis or the horizontal axis um, always has like what I know in your experiment, okay? It's called your independent variable. It's what I know. I know that we're talking about and that we're measuring liquid lemonade in lemon ice. I know that, okay? That's your independent variable. It's what I know. And it always goes down on your x-axis, okay? On the y-axis, it's called your dependent variable, okay? It's what you're measuring or how things respond, what you're trying to figure out in the experiment, Okay, so we don't really know the weights necessarily. It's something that we have to add up or it's something that we have to look up throughout the experiment. Okay, and notice how the numbers are set up. It has the weight, okay, in grams. It gives you the unit. It's measured in grams. And it goes by even increments. Okay, so meaning it goes by 50s. So 0, 50. 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. It goes by even increments. Maybe you could go by twos, two, four, six, eight, just depending on what you're measuring, okay? So when, when you're picking out a graph, okay, and this one um, is pretty easy because they're all set up the same. So some way to help you is always on the bottom is what I know, independent variable, and on the side is what you're trying to look up, it's what you're trying to add, it's what you're trying to measure in your experiment, okay? And really, each one of these should have a little title too, okay? So, anyway, back to the question. Um, we want to look at the total weight of the liquid lemonade and the total weight of the lemon ice, okay? And by now, you probably remember that um, weight is the same. Okay, so if you just glance at these graphs, you could probably figure out which one has the same weight. Okay, and how to read a graph, you're at liquid lemonade, and you're going to go up to, this is a bar graph, you're going to go up to however tall it is, and then go over on your y-axis and see what number that matches up to. Okay, and it's somewhere in between 200 and 250, it's a little bit closer to 250 grams, and what do you know? These two bar graphs are the same, liquid lemonade and lemon ice go up to the same height. And so they both weigh, okay, somewhere close to 250 grams. Okay, so that's how to read um, a graph. And the three of these, you can look at the different bar graphs and they go up to different heights. So if you go over, that would mean that they weigh different amounts. All right, so if you add up the 5 grams of lemonade plus the 100 grams of sugar plus the 137 grams of water. If you add those up, it is 242 grams 
which if you look at C, go over, it's about 242, I would guess, um, grams. So we're going to go with C. And the reason that I left off the 358 grams for the glass is they used the ice cube tray and they took the... Um, they took it out of the ice cube tray and they weren't even looking um, at the glass itself. So that part is not included. Okay, number five, last question. So the students decided to let the lemon ice melt after the investigation. And once the lemon ice melted, the students poured all the liquid into a different ice cube tray. Look at this, it's different, right? So this drawing shows this new tray. The students poured the same amount of lemonade into each little spot in the tray. There was no lemonade left over. The students covered the tray, placed it in the freezer overnight. The students remove the tray from the freezer the next day. So which statement is correct about the new lemon ice cubes? So pause it and see what you think. All right, after looking at your answer choices, I bet you can pick out same amount of matter, all right? So if you look at D, all together, the new lemon ice contained the same amount of matter as the lemon ice made the first time because remember, none was left over and they used it all. Okay, y'all, after you have fully mastered this topic, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment would be really fun for this one. Okay, you should be able to measure and graph quantities, those are like numbers, to provide evidence that regardless of the type of change that occurs when heating, cooling, or mixing substances, the total weight of matter is conserved. So conduct an investigation to determine whether the mixing of two or more substances results in new substances.